Hey there, YouTube. This is going to be a super quick video, okay? But I did want to show you plans here. And I already did some marking up so that you sort of have an idea. Um, but uh, if you take a look at the plans here, obviously you see a picture of the intersection. Um, this is an intersection that long since of all this work's been done. This is long in the past, but um, uh, if you look at the top, the top left corner, you're going to have uh, a representation of signal heads that you're going to see in the field, and some of which are going to be new. Then you got your ped heads here. Then we have a sequence diagram. We have a preemption schedule. Um, this is basically telling us which directions we're going to have come up uh, with emergency preemption settings. Okay, and then this intersection here has all sorts of stuff going on at it, okay? And then there's numbers and then notes about the parts that are going in, including exactly what's happening in the intersection. And then up here, there's general notes about the, t the work and the way that it's supposed to be performed in um, pertaining to this particular job. Down here, you're gonna see uh, scale in feet and then right next to it, there's a compass rose that tells us that this is north, okay? And if you take a look here at our sequence, one, two, three, and four, and then, th and then five and six. Phase seven and eight are not being used, okay? So now I know this is phase one. <laughs> this is funny. This is a through phase. <laughs> this is phase six, okay? Phase six is my southbound movement, okay? Phase six is my southbound. Phase one is my southbound left turn, okay? Phase three is my eastbound movement, and phase four is my westbound movement. These are split phase. They don't run together. They run separate, independent of each other. So the way it would work normally uh, is um, uh, phase three would run before phase four in the ring. See? Okay. Now, if you are to look at some of these, uh, it'll say, let's say here, um, connect conduits to existing junction box. Utilize existing conduits to wire back to signal cabinet. Okay, okay, and this is number 12, I think I just read, number 12. And then as you can see down here is number 12. And then they are pointing at the junction box. Okay, number one, construct signal foundation per wash dot, standard, plan, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then it says down here, it says... Uh, Type three signal pole and equipment per equipment schedule and signal pole detail sheet, okay? And then down here you see signal pole equipment schedule. Well, that was number one, okay? Here's number one in the field. And then down here, you can see next to number one, there's a 12. So what does it say here at 12? See, it's a type three pole. It's gonna get one EVP detector. There's going to be three signal heads. What kind of mounting type? It's going to be a type M mounting. There's going to be two pedestrian signal heads. Okay, type A mountings. There's going to be two ped push buttons with signs. And then there's going to be some street name signs and a traffic sign. It even says here, T3 traffic sign. Here's the street name sign. Here's the traffic sign. And now we know everything that's happening at this on this pole here, okay? Um, so, uh, like I said, I'm gonna keep it as simple as possible. If you see these little arrows here, these little arrows are actually representations of the signal heads. So if we look here, this is one one. What's that? Head number one one. So here, they're gonna have a three section head pointing for phase one. That's going to be your left turn, your phase one left turn. And that's why the first digit is one. 
you see here, this is 6-1 and this is 6-2. Well, 6-1 and 6-2 are right here. We got a brand new pole with two brand or three brand new signal heads, 6-1, 6-2. So here's a three section, here's a three section. These are both for phase six, okay? So when these guys go green, these guys get to go. When this guy goes green, this guy gets to go. Down here, if you see these lines that, uh, these arrows that have lines through it, that means that's a pedestrian movement. Those are gonna be your ped heads. This is a phase eight ped going this way that runs with phase three. Okay, they could have they could have even made this a th phase three ped, and I would have known what it meant, but um, just because usually phase eight and phase four. Anyway, um, this here is a phase six ped. Up here, there's also a phase six ped, and I would presume this is a phase four ped. This is a phase four ped. This is a phase two ped. And then right here, this is the other phase two ped. And here's the other phase eight ped. Okay. Um, <clears throat> that's about as much as I think I'm going to cover today. Um, there is uh, also a few other kind of interesting drawings uh, or parts to this. This will show you all of the different conduits that are running from point A to point B and the wire that's being used inside of them. And then this is a wiring diagram and it actually shows terminal to terminal where everything is connected all the way back to the signal cabinet. Okay, even shows back here. This is my signal cabinet and where it connects in the field. Um, these little boxes are pull boxes and vaults. And then these are the terminal cans that go on the poles. All of these notes, all of these notes, all of them happen in the field. And it starts with this drawing. And then once I have this drawing, and then I also have my uh, signal timing from a timing engineer or a traffic engineer. Once we have our basic signal timings, then we have all the information that we need. We can start programming a controller. We have our sequence, so we know how many, what phases are to be in use. We have our preemption. We uh, presumably got our timings from the engineer, and now we are capable of putting all of the information we need into the controller and even start testing a cabinet. And different municipalities will do it differently. Um, you know, they all have the way of setting things up. But um, what I suggest, most signal technicians, um, obviously, once they're done with their plan review and they have a date on the calendar as to the rough idea of when they'll be performing the work and when they have all of the equipment ready, um, and now they have all of this information, it's time to start programming. So, when you program, you have all of the information laid out and ready to go. Sometimes it gets interesting. Sometimes you might have a unique configuration or, um, you know, I know this is split phase. That's not, I, I don't think that that would be considered unique, but um, <clears throat> on some projects you might you might require some sort of a logic statement to make it run the way that they are asking for it to run. Um, for example, uh, on some projects, I will get a transit signal that needs to actually go green before the main street gets to move so that the vehicle can get out and change lanes um, so that the bus can get across the intersection before the cars start entering in. And uh, <clears throat> all of these kind of extra planning uh, requires maybe more phases to be used. Um, you might need to uh, add an overlap, things like that. 
And uh, all of these extra things need to be taken into consideration because not only do you have to program your controller, but you have to set up the cabinet to work it. And in order to set up the cabinet and have it fully functional, you need to have your MMU uh, or your conflict monitor programmed and soldered and ready to go. Once you have it all set up and it's running without issue, uh, then you can allow your signal cabinet to run that way. Maybe in recall, you'll place different calls and leave them in recall, maybe leave everything in max recall, everything in min recall, whatever, for about a week, two weeks. You want the controller to have a burn-in time. Uh, here, uh, we do a minimum of two-week burn-in time before we allow the cabinet and the controller to be installed in the field. And that's what I know. <laughs> that's, a, that's about the information I'm, gonna, I'm prepared to give you today. But um, I'm glad that somebody did request that we did uh, a little bit about how plan review operates and, and what plans are about and how to read plans. And hopefully you learned a little bit today uh, please click like and subscribe. They keep moving things. I don't know where they are now, but, um, you know, do that. And I really do appreciate everyone, all the subscribers. Um, and, uh, it's rewarding to talk to everybody and, and hear from people in the comments and stuff. So, uh, I really do appreciate it. And, uh, until next time, talk to you later.